Okay, so um, I've been asked over the years, I think, like Lou says, we've known each other for a long time, talk about diversity and inclusion. I've always kind of shied away from talking about this to a bunch of job boards because it kind of feels like we're, we're giving away the, the market that we've um, managed to build for ourselves. But I'd be interested to know right now in the audience, who's actually from a job board right now? Can you show me hands? So kind of the most of the audience. And who's responsible for bringing traffic in to the website in any way? Okay, yeah, great, so it's still a large number. And who has direct responsibility for, direct responsibility for diversity and inclusion? So no one really, just, okay. I'd argue that point, you know, if you are responsible for bringing in traffic, you are directly responsible for diversity and inclusion within your organisation. And we can talk a little bit about how that's going to play out. So when Louise said, can you come and do a bit of a chat? I thought, well, rather than stand up and bleat a load of numbers at you, we've actually just started our crowdfunding campaign. And I'm going to play you a couple of minutes of the video we've put together. And while I've been out um, minging around and chatting, I've heard several times people say to me, you know, the market's softening. We're starting to see uh, interesting things happen about candidate numbers and the, what corporates are doing around uh, buying products and services from us. And actually, I'd argue that, and I'd say it's not softening. The market's just changing its direction. And the problem we've got with being job boards is we're a bit like toothpaste. We kind of like do the same thing, but we're in different boxes. We're packaged up in different ways. We're kind of, you know, one's great for fresh breath, one's great for white teeth, one's great for strong gums. But effectively, we kind of do the same thing. We just brand ourselves differently in the names that we do or the, the sectors that we go in. Um, and we've been quietly building something in the background that might take you a little bit from, from surprise. So let me play you a couple of minutes of this crowdfunding video. Now, this is going live to the public in the next week. So let's talk a little bit about Vasida what we do around diversity, and give you a bit of an insight to some of the things you might not know. And I need the Quality. Sound. Respect. Culture. Inclusion. Diversity. Accessibility. Vasida. We launched Vasida in June 2017, and we're already a multi-award winning career site. We generated over one million pounds in sales during 2018. With a gross profit of 543,000 pounds. We've signed up over 200 major employers, including 20 government agencies. And we are now achieving a 90% renewal rate year on year. So why is it that in such a saturated market with tens of thousands of recruitment providers, that Vasida has made an impact so quickly? Research by LinkedIn names diversity as the number one priority for recruiters globally. And two thirds of both active and passive job seekers say a diverse workforce is an important factor for them when evaluating companies and job offers. We built Vasida to help employers attract a diverse workforce while enabling talented people to find forward-thinking companies who want to create inclusive workplace cultures. And we're smashing it. Job seekers love us. Over two million visits from 136 countries serving over four million pages of diversity-related content. The Boston Consultancy Group study reports businesses with more diverse management have a 19% higher revenue return than their competitors. The industry has barely changed since the first job boards came online in 1994. The statement, we're an equal opportunities employer at the bottom of the job spec, just doesn't cut it. The CEDA has modernised diversity and we've changed the way employers communicate the great things they're doing. We were the first job board to integrate AI, giving job seekers a tighter job match and our clients quality applications. We're producing data showing our clients exactly how they are perceived and received by job seekers, the only site to do this, helping our clients understand 
where they need to be, focusing their efforts to be more appealing to the people they want. We can encourage applicants from different backgrounds and we get a lot of insights in who these people are, what they're trying to do and then we're also able to showcase our journey, our support that we're able to offer in our personalised hub which I think is um, really good. It takes time to listen and to understand, to be able to assess business need and to be able to deliver a quality service that matches the output that we expect. We're now even featured directly on many of our clients' websites, so we're right at the heart of the hiring process. Okay, so what we're talking about there is actually the fact that we're in a position right now where you've got companies like LinkedIn out there shouting on the side of buses, search a million jobs. Come and, find, come and search a million jobs on our website and find the one that's right for you. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't really want to search a million jobs. Yeah, I want, to, I want to find the job that's right for me. But what we're hearing now from the candidate is I want to actually find the right place to work. Yeah? And when we start looking at the breakdown of the population, we're seeing that what, what we're looking for is an emotional, uh, cultural fit. Individuals that want to belong within a job that they feel accepted for who they are. Now, when we look at the number of candidates that choose to not disclose their disability, 40% uh, of people, for example, from the LGBT community do not want to talk about their sexual orientation because they're worried it's going to be used against them. You know, we see people changing the name on their CV to become more Western sounding because they don't want to use their, uh, their natural uh, name because they're worried they're going to be screened out of the recruitment process. People aren't even talking about the fact that they want to start a family in a year's time because they're worried it's going to be used against them. Yep. Now, as a, an industry, I don't think that we've really been very good at helping the candidate to find the right type of company. Now, when we speak to the types of employers that we're working with right now, and as you can see on that board, we're, we've, we've hit 200 clients and we're, we launched Proceeded two years ago, we're starting to see the demand for diversity and inclusion really start to you know, accelerate. And it's because people understand now that if you shrink your candidate pool, you're fishing in a smaller pond. You've probably heard this again and again throughout the last two days. But organisations have got a real problem. And their problem is the fact that, and I'll use uh, you know, a, a, a kind of a, a really blunt example here. If you're JP Morgan, for example, your issue is the fact that your brand has been perceived as being this kind of like white public schoolboy type of brand, or if you're network rail, the unconscious bias of the job seeker says, right, network rail, that's an engineering company, it's men on the side of a track in orange day glow jackets, all sweaty and leering at each other. As a young gay female, or as um, you know, a black mother, for example, is that the right type of environment for me? And actually, it's the unconscious bias of the job seeker that gives the company the problem. And we know that diverse teams outperform non-diverse teams because we've had it rammed down our throat about the statistics for that for a long time now. The problem is, is nobody really knows what to do about it. So the approach that we took was to start to talk to these organisations and say, look, the reason you don't have diversity is because you're not seen as an employer choice to those people. Just makes sense. Yeah, it's obvious. Yeah? Otherwise, you wouldn't have a diversity issue. So what are you doing? What are you actually doing to be uh, a diverse employer? And you speak to the recruitment teams, and they'll say, well, our diversity teams take care of that. They're kind of out there. They do, they do all this stuff. Go and have a chat with them. So that's exactly what we did. So we sit down, and we, t we speak to the diversity teams. They've got their own budgets. They've got their own targets their own departments within the organisation, and, and they're very rarely interacting with the recruitment teams. In fact, often what happens is recruitment teams are walking down the corridor, diversity comes in the other direction, and they're like, right, tell them what they want to hear, and then when they go off, we can carry on doing what we're doing. Yeah? And they kind of end up sort of rutting a bit like this. We need more diversity, recruitment. Recruitment says, yeah, we know that, but we're not getting these applications from these individuals, so what are we going to do about it? So what Vasida decided to do was to really work with the organisation and say, okay, so you want more females, you've got this target, you want to be 
2020 by 2020, or you want 50% of your applications to be from females. You want more ethnic groups, fantastic. You want more LGBT, that's great. You know, you're really opening up your marketplace here now. What are you doing? And often, the answer that we get is, well, you know, we've, our staff attend Pride. Uh, we've got an LGBT network. Uh, we've got a steering group. We've got senior people at, um, at high level across the organization that are openly gay. Uh, we've got multi-faith room. Oh, we've got a returning mothers program. Um, we've got a returners program. We've got crash facilities. We've got uh, a black network. We're doing work in the community. Our building's accessible. I mean, wow, we're overwhelmed with all this stuff that we hear. Problem is, job seeker goes online. They look for a job. Network Rail, JP Morgan. I don't know if I want to work there. The decision is made very quickly. So we're not breaking the unconscious bias of the job seeker. We're plowing unconscious bias training into the employer at hiring level, but the pipeline's not bringing it in. So what we decided to do was to look at how companies display their EVP and start to make sense of the fact, well, if you're doing all this work, well, why is, why is it not working? And the, and the reality was, is that it's just ring-fenced within the organisation. And you know what? The LGBT network don't really talk to the returning mums group. And the returning mums group aren't really interested in the BAME group. And the BAME group aren't speaking to the disability group because everyone's focused on their own little bubble. Yeah? And they're, they're kind of doing work sporadically. It's fragmented across the organisation. But when you pull it all together and you actually look at the sum part of the organisation... What you can actually see is these employers are doing really great things. But even the recruitment teams, half the time, don't know about all the great work that the organisation is doing. So if we look at Accenture here for, as an example, they've got all this content within their company about the equality, their shared parental leave. And when we start to sweep it all together and we put it in one place, actually produces the DNA of the organisation and actually shows in one place what that organisation is doing in its totality. And the great thing for us as a, a website is that we need content, right? And there is an abundance of content out there that is more meaningful than how to write a CV. Here's your interview tips. We've done it and we've done it and we've done it again. And there's only so many times you can regurgitate to people uh, how to write a CV and, and, and their interview tips and body language. What we want to talk about is belonging and how you can actually feel included at an organisation. What's in it for me as a returning mum? Why am I going to go and work for Accenture? Why, why should I come and um, be interested in this organisation when I don't necessarily see myself represented? And actually what we're talking about here is we're talking about... Well, individuals arriving at a job and seeing information that is relevant to them as a human being. And if Accenture want to talk about next to their job spec, where it's a technical director, Accenture attends uh, Pride. Here's information on our LGBT network. Accenture wins award for its Returning Mothers program. Check out our black network. Check out our multi-faith uh, facilities within the organisation. We take that information and we put it right in front of the job seeker. That makes a connection of belonging. And when you look at Maslow's hierarchy of need, belonging is right up there at the top. We all want to feel part of something. It's not nice to feel excluded. It's not nice to feel part of the out group. We want to see ourselves represented in the organisation. Now, one of the other things that we decided to do as a business was Vasida, as you saw on the video, it stands for values, equality, respect, culture, inclusion, diversity, and accessibility. And next year, we will be celebrating 10 years of the Equality Act. It came out in October 2010. And actually, on that Equality Act, it says that advertising jobs have to be accessible, right? The problem is, is when you look at accessibility, hardly any of the ATSs offer true accessibility to candidates that need uh, support in that area. And we don't treat disability, by the way, any different from any other characteristic, but we can't say we're inclusive if we're not accessible, because we're saying in some areas of society, you're not welcome to view the content on our site. Now, 22% of 
of the UK population struggle with online content. Yeah, it might be because English is a second language. It could be because of uh, visual impairment. Uh, dyslexia, one in 10 people suffer from dyslexia. And all we do is we serve up the same stuff. You know, we don't give the user much of a choice. So we, we decided to make a difference with this. And throughout our site, we have our um, enable tech. And actually, you can have the site read to you. So it'll speak to you. Join Accenture and you'll discover it's not just the work that's diverse. You'll be part of a mix of brilliant people from all that group. Yeah, so we can reaffirm to the user exactly that what they think they're seeing is actually what they're seeing. And it gives them a lot more confidence. So these are additional tools. You, this is a product called Recite Me. You can embed this onto your website tomorrow. It's one line of code. And it makes a big difference to a lot of users. It also shows to your clients yeah, that you as a job board are pushing out best practice and that you want to open up your networks. 110 million people across Europe would benefit for better accessibility online, okay? And as an industry, we're not doing enough to serve that. By the way, this site's WC3 AAA rated. You can use it even if you're completely blind, right? It'll interact with JAWS and, and DRAG and things like that. There's a ruler there for people with dyslexia. Yeah, uh, stops words jumping around. Nice. You'll be part of a mix of... There's a screen mask there to get rid of background noise in case you uh, have a neurological issue or attention deficit, something like that, autism. Um, we present it in different languages. Lots of really nice tools there for users. Really easy to implement on a website. Okay. Now, one of the great things about having lots of clients, which we do now, is about the fact that they give us so much content. Yeah, they don't really know what to do with it because by the time they've won that award with Stonewall or they've, uh, they've won some you know, top times, top 10 employment places for women, the time it takes them to actually get it onto their website through their ATS provider or get it through their tech team, it's kind of outdated. So what we do at Vecida is we're bringing all this together within what we call our knowledge center. And as we know through Stephen O'Donnell's beautiful beard that he's now displaying here at the front, we're in Movember. Um, and we're celebrating this as a men's health awareness. You know, we, we tend to kind of exclude men a lot from um, this diversity conversation, and it's not very nice to know that suicide is the number one killer of men under 40 here in the UK. And we as job boards can help to educate what our clients are doing to become really inclusive to these individuals. We're not just displaying a vacancy and a static page here that talks about the client we're evolving every time uh, the client does something positive we add it into the employer value proposition and here we've got over 5,000 articles now that are relevant to human beings and and if I start looking at information to to um, to do with disability the site will start serving more disability if I'm looking at LGBT the site serves more LGBT so we can steer the user to companies that want to increase their representation as of me as a human being. And that's incredibly empowering to know when you've had discrimination against you, that here's an organization that wants to increase their represent representation of you. Yes, yeah, so your diversity can now start to work in your favor and to your advantage. So we're, we're talking through here, jobs in, Health, we're talking about Black History Month. These clients are doing such wonderful things. They're pushing out press releases, blogs, etc., not being leveraged as part of their recruitment strategy. So we're bringing that in and helping to, to use this type of information. We're interviewing our employers to talk about this stuff, and we can push it out in the, into the public eye. All we're really doing here is Vecida is using jobs as clickbait. So we're using the services of JobGate, and we've used that uh, many times. People don't wake up in the morning and go, I'm black, I better go off and find a diversity website, because they're switching off their diversity. Yeah? They're not waking up saying, I'm gay, where's, where's gayjobs.co.uk, because that's not what they want to be hired for. They're looking for that financial controller position. They're looking for that head of sales role, hiding their diversity, because they're switching off in the recruitment process. Yeah? Discrimination, discrimination. They arrive at the job. They see information that's relevant to them. 
they start to disclose a lot earlier in the recruitment process. Now, this is where we start to really differentiate ourselves in the market. This is not some trumpet blowing. I'm giving you an insight to what we've been working on quietly in, in, in the background. Here we start to give all the usual stuff that you get from any job board. How many times has your organization been viewed? How many jobs have you posted? How many views? How many applications? But then we start getting into article views. Now this article was from a retail company and they only put one article on our website, which is a bit poor. Uh, and it was an industry average of eight, diversity related. Um, and they had 4,000 views. But from that, we can instantly give them their male-female split, transitioning, transsexual, intersex, LGBT. Yeah, we can start talking about the faith of those individuals. We can start talking about if they have a hidden disability or a visual disability. We can talk about uh, the ethnicity. And that's great, but why, why do these companies want to know that? Well, I'll tell you why, because if you're Barclays, you're Lloyds, and you're Santander, you're also kind of doing the same thing, aren't you? One's blue, one's green, and one's red. They've got pensions, they've got mortgages, they've got current accounts, they've got pretty much the same products. But they're competing in the marketplace for the same talent. And if you become the employer of choice to the LGBT industry, or the people uh, from the LGBT, or if you're the employer of choice to BAME individuals in the UK, you know, BAME spend, black and ethnic minority groups in the UK, 300 billion pounds a year they're spending. LGBT is about 120 billion. Disability is about 200 billion. It makes financial sense. You offer products and services to get the share of wallet from these individuals. You can't produce products and services for these people unless you understand their buying habits. And to understand their buying habits, you need to have them working within your organization. And if Lloyd's are kicking your ass at returning mums, you've got a real problem because you've got then talent available to you that sees you as an employer choice. So by producing data, you're making a very great connection with the candidate. We have about an 80% disclosure rate from candidates now coming to Vesida because they see it's not a box tick. You know, they can see themselves represented. They can see exactly what the employers are doing and it's a safe environment for them to make a decision about where their next employer is likely to be less likely to get bullied in their next role, more likely to be promoted, more likely to stay longer in the organization. Yep, it's not just about recycling, aggregation, traffic, and firing it out. We can give you 200 applications on one click. No, I wanna go and find the right employer for me based on my needs as a father, based on the needs of my disabled child, based on the fact that I have a disability, based on the fact I'm from the LGBT community. Does that make sense? Yeah? kind of waffling at you a bit and kind of forcing it down there. But we're seeing a real trend now for diversity and inclusion f coming from the business sector. Yeah, now as job boards, we've been great in the past. Now, I remember when I joined Monster in the early days, like way back, 15 years ago, we were physically having to drag clients kicking and screaming out of the recruitment agency and online and they were worried that their staff wouldn't be using job boards. And then we, we, you know, we ran away with the industry. We became a multi-billion pound industry. But we've not done a huge amount since to interact with the change. And now we're seeing clients asking about diversity and inclusion. And people seem to be scratching their heads. And I hope that insight kind of gives you an idea as to some of the things you might be able to adopt. So I've got about five minutes for questions. Yeah, sorry, you're, you're looking for very specific content. If you uh, were a niche board or a generous board or a, a recruitment platform, do you still think that still stands? There's an abundance of content that those, play, those you know, the job boards, hiring platforms could go and get that would be more engaging. So instead of just worrying about aggregating job roles, yeah. they could aggregate content and build what, as you said, 15 years ago when you were pulling people, kicking and screaming to monster. Yeah. What was then called, you know, oh, you want to do some nice employer branding, right? Yeah, yeah. That will really become sticky content, right? Mm -hmm. So would you encourage the fact that this is now quite easy to do? Yeah. Because it used to be hard. Yep. This is now easy to do. Do you think that's something, you know, regardless of uh, the, the, the direction you're in, yep. that any job board could do and find that content around 
the skills and roles? Any job board can do it. Now, diversity and inclusion is not some specialist subject. Yeah, we, we're classed as a niche. We're not. We are, diversity means everybody. You know, we are no more diverse than that lady over there or that man over there. We are all diverse, and therefore we all have our own needs. So I would absolutely say if you're a generalist website, this type of information is about belonging. It's about pushing stuff that shows everybody who comes to the site that there's something for them to consume. It's not about skill set. It's not about geography. It's not about salary. There's a, there's a million jobs out there. LinkedIn will tell you that on the side of a bus. Why would I want to go and work for your organization as a disabled man, as a gay woman, as a mother? That's the stuff I want to know now. You know, I want to know why am I going to join? I've got a choice as a candidate right now. There's more people employed than there ever has been before in the history of the country. Yeah, that creates a problem for businesses that want to expand. They've got to compete. They're not just putting the price of their salary up by 10 grand. That's not the point of attraction anymore. It's about why should I come and join this organisation? And if I see something that, re that resonates with me, that's better than my current job, I can take a sideways step knowing that I'll belong in that organisation. Steve? What would you say to job boards that say anything that doesn't channel candidates to make an application, i.e. content, uh, means that they're reading content instead of making an application? Well, uh, you're, di you're, you're diverting them from the, 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 the KPI of X number of applications per job within a given time scale. Well, I mean, we want candidates to apply for jobs, yeah? But as a job board, it's not just about filling ourselves with application because all you, you might as well just have a quick button on there that says don't read anything and just a pit apply. We want to fill our boots with CVs, yeah? So we can actually then target. If a job comes in from a client, we want to go out to our existing candidate database. So it's not always about an application. It's about filtering the right role to the candidate and then and recirculating that. We get a lot of traffic in. We want that traffic to keep using our website. Limited shelf life of a candidate, really. We're constantly having to put more people through the funnel. You want people to come to your website, enjoy the experience, spend time on that website. Um, yes, you, you want returning visitors. You want time on the website. Otherwise, they're here and they're gone and your brand doesn't have much stickiness. By giving them really good content, yeah, it might be a distraction, but it's helping them to build a feeling of where they're going. And that's really important when choosing a career. Not necessarily a, a, a gig economy job, but when we're looking at meaningful uh, job applications, what the client wants to know is, I don't want a 1,000 applications. I want really good applications. What we at Vesida say is, actually, we want people to come to our website, look at that, look at that job and that client and go, Looks to me like they want to hire, you know, looks to me like they want to hire birds. Looks to me like they want to hire gay people. Not sure I want to work there. Good. You know, the message from the client is your boss might be a gay woman. If you're unhappy with that, this might not be the place for you to come and work. That's what we're, we're looking at. That's what the employers are telling us. Mm -hmm.